Chapter 37 The next morning, Da Afu shook Min Li awake. Wake up, sleepy, Da Fu said, pulling her up. Come on, we want to show you something. Yes, Afu said. Hurry! Min Li followed them out of the house and through the streets. It was almost as if there was a parade, for all the family were coming out of their houses and following. Min Li hadn't realized Da Afu's family was so large. There were aunts, uncles, cousins. The home behind the red gate doors was really a village of relatives. As Min Li ran around through the open doors, she stopped and grinned, because there, waiting out on the stone ground, was Dragon. He was strong and smiling, sitting straight and alert. There was no daze in his eyes and no foul blackness on his body. In fact, except for four pale raised scars on his arm, he looked exactly as he did before they met the green tiger. You're okay, Min Li said as she hugged him. Of course, Dragon said to her, grinning with happiness. I told you that dragons heal quickly. Yes, they do, Agong said from beside her. After the poison left him, his wounds healed almost immediately. Min Li was so happy to see the dragon that she didn't notice that most of Da Afu's family were surrounding them in awe. A dragon, she heard one small boy whisper. A real one. We told you so, Da Afu murmured to their cousins. See? Unfortunately, friend dragon, Agong said loudly so that all could hear, you are too large for us to show you proper hospitality inside our home. That's okay. We should leave soon anyway, Min Li said and turned to Da Afu. If you will still show us the way to Never Ending Mountain? Of course, they grinned, and Ama said, Yes, you should leave as soon as you can. The sooner you leave, the sooner you can return to your parents. That would be for the best. Agong nodded when he heard Ama's words. Breakfast then, he said, and then we will see our new friends off. So even though the rocky land was cold and windy, the family brought their breakfasts of warm rice porridge out to eat. No one wanted to miss a moment of looking at a real dragon. Ama led a large iron pot rolled in on a rough wood platform by two of Da Afu's uncles in front of the dragon. The pot was steaming and full, and Min Li recognized it as the medicine tea. An aunt carried cups of the tea on two trays balanced on her shoulders with a stick for anyone to take. Min Li carefully reached for a cup. The fragrant aroma was too tempting to let pass. We should not call this drink medicine, an uncle said. It is too delicious, and now that there is no more green tiger, there is nothing for it to cure. Maybe we should call it well tea, Afu laughed, since the green tiger is down in the well. No, Agong said. We want to remember our friends, not our enemies. Then we should call it dragon well tea, Dafu said, because it made the dragon well. The family all cheered at that, and there was a look of softness in Dragon's eyes that Min Li had never seen before. He was unused to kindness, she realized. He had spent most of his years alone and trapped by his flightless body. Too soon, breakfast was over, and Min Li was packing her possessions into the yellow silk bag the king had given her, while Ama tied supplies onto the backs of Afu and Dafu. Just in case, she said, slipping in their simple food of rice wrapped up in leaves and salted boiled eggs. Bring Min Li to Never Ending Mountain and then come right home. Agong put his hands on Min Li's shoulders and said, You're a brave girl, Min Li, quick and clever. But you have been away from home too long. Go as quickly as you can. Ama wrapped her warm arms around Min Li, then brought out a warm jacket. For you, she said. We made it while you were sleeping. Your dress is too thin for the mountain. The jacket was multicolored, made of large patches sewn together. Some dark blue, some deep purple, 
a few bright red. Min Lee smiled thankfully. Already the cold wind was chilling her, but she was hesitant to ask these people for anything since they had already given her so much. As she put it on, she marveled at its warmth. The fabric looked like plain cotton, but she felt as warm as if she had put on a thick fur. Let's go then, Da Afu said, and the boy swung up his arm in excitement. It was only then that Min Lee noticed a large gash missing from his sleeve. She looked at the sleeve of her new coat and the bright red patch that made it, and she gasped. Goodbye, Da Afu's family waved. As they waved, Min Lee saw each of them had missing material in their sleeves. Her goodbyes froze in her throat as she realized her warm coat was made from pieces cut from the family's own clothing. Come on, Afu said, her white hand slipping from her notched sleeve to pull at Min Lee. Hurry up! Yes, Dragon said. We should go so the twins can return to their village as soon as possible. Min Lee nodded, and as she waved a grateful goodbye to the village, a sea of ruined sleeves fluttered back at her. <laughs>